Hi everybody, and welcome to Symphony Irvine Presents. Uh, we are doing um, this as our second event, I believe, that we're doing online. And uh, we just I just wanted to welcome everybody. Um, this is uh, kind of been a um, in the works for a while. Um, and uh, let's just hang on for one second. Um, one of the things that um, Okay, so everybody could hear me. I can actually hear myself going on several times, so I don't know why I'm getting that kind of thing. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, mute out. If you guys are experiencing any uh, technical issues as you're uh, listening to us, uh, please do um, comment in the chat or let somebody know. Um, we here at Symphony Irvine have um, are kind of listening to this event, and we're just hoping that it goes great for you guys because this is the world that we live in now. We are uh, an orchestral organization, a volunteer organization based in Irvine, and our goal as an organization is just to make music for our community. And because of the pandemic and because of the lockdowns, we just uh, we we, re we really wanted to be able to make some music together and present to you guys a lot sooner, but unfortunately. We were unable to do that because of the regulations. So what we decided to do is to put smaller events together where um, a few of us sort of uh, put these chamber musics together, record it, and then uh, present it to you guys online. Now, I'm coming to you guys live right now um, from a, uh, my studio. This is part of the conductor's world now. Not only are we studying scores and preparing for music and planning, but we're also learning about things like editing and sound and streaming and things like that. That's just kind of where we're at right now. So welcome everybody and good evening. We are gonna get to the music right away, but first I just wanna thank a few people uh, that made this all possible. Um, first of all, um, I wanna say thank you to uh, Phil and Katie Friedel uh, for sponsoring our artists tonight. Um, they've been so generous, they're on our board at Symphony Irvine. Um, and uh, they, just like us, have this passion for making music happen. So thanks to them, uh, we were able to get some support from them to make this happen. I also want to thank um, La Sierra University, where we actually recorded this event. Um, their audio tech people were available to help put this together. Um, I also want to thank um, members of the Symphony Irvine Board and um, uh, Charla De La Quadra, who's our president, Edie Van Hoos, who's our treasurer, and Stefano uh, Stefan, who's our um, vice president. Um, because, you know, this is something that, as m some of you may know, we do pretty much on our extra time. Uh, and so lending that time to make this happen, I just want to say thank you for making that happen. I also want to thank our guests. Um, who I'm going to bring into the studio so we can chat a little bit with them before we hear the recital today. Um, that being Liz Johnson, Elizabeth Johnson, who's our new concert master as of last December, um, and Michelle Peng, who is our pianist, our collaborative pianist for the event tonight. Um, Michelle um, and Liz were working very hard to rehearse together in Michelle's home in Irvine. And uh, of Liz, of course, with a very busy teaching schedule and um, performing schedule, um, is uh, able to come in and do uh, this event. And you're gonna see more of these happen uh, as time rolls on. And what we're hoping is that even when things go back to normal, which is what we want to be able to perform for you live again, we still wanna keep a chamber music series going, some of it which will be in person, but we always wanna keep this sort of online event available for you guys so you can watch in the comfort of your own home. Today is kind of a gloomy, cloudy day. Who wants to get in their car and actually drive somewhere? So I hope each of you that are watching are in some place very nice, warm, and cozy as you come and listen to some great music. By the way, if you are able to comment, if you're watching on YouTube or on the uh, mobile app uh, and you're able to comment, please do comment. I see your comments here live. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, feel free to give kudos to our um, uh, recital. We want you to have as an interactive experience as possible. Of course, you're always welcome to just sit back and listen and enjoy. But if you want to say something or say hello, please do. We want to hear from you. Um, let us know. Actually, one of the things I'm curious about is who, who's the furthest away? Like who is watching this event from, let's say, outside of California or outside of the Orange County, Riverside, Los, Los Angeles area? Um, we might have some people that are watching from far away. If you are, please do submit in the comments and uh, let us know 
where you're watching from. We'd love to say hello. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with our recital for this evening. Uh, first, I want to bring in our guests. So let me just get them in here. We have Michelle. I'm going to go ahead and unmute them. And we have Liz. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Hi. Well, how are you? Hi. Hi. Welcome. So nice Hi. to see you. How are you? I just want to say on behalf of the organization how thankful I am that uh, you guys uh, were able to put this recital program together. This is not normal for us. So we're still even a year into the pandemic. Let's just count off the first six, seven months of it where we are just sh in shock of what to do. Slowly kind of saying, OK, we got to make music again. And we put this program together. Well, you guys put this program together, really. Um, so. Let's just start with you, um, Michelle. You, uh, you've, how long have you lived in Irvine? Uh, I, live, uh, I have lived in Irvine from 2005, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm back to Taiwan for like six years. So from 2013, I started to live uh, in Irvine until now. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, it was so nice to meet you for this event. Um, Liz, I know we introduced you to our audience, but there might have been people who didn't know about you last time. Tell us a little bit about your background, like like how long have you been in Irvine, and tell us about yourself. Well, um, we came to Irvine from out of state when I was young, uh, so I went to high school here locally, as well as my undergraduate at UC Irvine, and then I did my graduate studies out in Maryland, in Baltimore, at Peabody, and then came back in 2003 and have been just loving the environment here ever since. Awesome, wonderful. And how did how did this program come about? Like, um, tell us a little bit about when you guys decided to do a program and the proposition was made for to say, hey, um, let's do something that we can record and present in a live stream to our audience. Like, how did that suit you? Like, uh, what was your initial impression about that? Liz. I'll let Michelle go first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we want to have the recital have uh, a lot of uh, variety. Mm -hmm. So uh, we choose the, from the different uh, periods and uh, uh, to make them together. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And, and Liz, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. We wanted to do something kind of from every time period so that all of music was represented. Um, and so we were able to do that through this program where we just picked a couple movements and um, have it for everybody's enjoyment. Excellent. Wonderful. And, and out of the program that we're going to listen to, we're going to hear Bach first. Okay. And um, when... You know, as a conductor, I don't get really ma very many opportunities to play. Um, and uh, so when Liz, you asked me, you said, hey, would you like to play on the Bach? I, of course, jumped on it. I was like, let's, wow, that sounds exciting. Um, you know, it's been a while and I, now I could practice and, and, uh, and, and put this together. And we kind of put it together pretty quick, right? Um, uh, but originally, you, you decided to want to do the Bach. Now, you've gone a, you have a long history with this piece. Right? I remember you saying. When was the first time you played this piece, the Bach? I was maybe between the ages of six and eight when okay. I first played this piece. And so, and at the time, my mom would play piano. Mm -hmm. um, and so I got to know both, all actually, all three parts, both violin parts and the piano part. So oh. it's. Um, it's very familiar and it's it's comforting because it's an old favorite. Wonderful, yes. I, I can't remember how many times I've played it now, but I, it's always been a favorite to play. I probably didn't start as early as you did, but uh, I really enjoyed it. Now, when we were recording, your parents were also at the recording session, right? What was yeah. that like? Like, now you're playing and here you're, here's your mom sitting out in the audience that was like, you know, watching. What was that like for you, having your parents watch the whole this whole process unfold? It it was great and to have um, a fan club and to have a support system like that, especially during times like these, is mm -hmm. is so fantastic and such a blessing. So it was great to have them there. Wonderful. And and Michelle, I know that playing a Bach. I mean, you're basically covering the whole orchestra section, and you know, yeah. working with. Have you played this piece with violins before? Like, or was this your? Uh, maybe, maybe one movement. One movement, oh, right? One. 
yeah. probably the first movement. A lot of a lot of students <laughs> play it. Yeah. Um, so it was very interesting to kind of get that color that we wanted from the piano in covering the orchestra part because this is not one of those typical pieces where you know the pianist is just accompanying the violinists. They are, actually have a very integrated counterpoint to what's going on in the double violin section. So, you know, being able to cover what's going on in the cello and the vi violas and things like that, uh, I'm sure on the piano could prevent some cha uh, can present some challenges. So um, I, I thought that it, you navigated it very well. It was always very, uh, very uh, nice to be able to do this during the um, uh, recording process. So, well, with that being said, let's, uh, let's just go right into our first piece. Um, so this is the Bach Violin, double violin concerto. Okay, here we go. What? I'm still learning how to navigate this, but here we go. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wait, I got something for us. <laughs> wow, where did that come from? No, that was <laughs> um, wow, that was a lot of fun. Um, isn't that something like, you know, we're, we're playing along uh, when we actually did the recording and playing through the movements as if we were in a performance. Like we, we did have some people listening to us, but it's just a completely different ball game when we're actually playing it. But it was a lot of fun to be able to, to do something like that. So my uh, congratulations to uh, putting that together. Um, so our next piece on the program is a violin sonata, a movement from a violin sonata by Mozart. Um, and as you formulated this, who, who came up with this particular? Mozart wrote, I think about, what, 19 or 18 different, uh, maybe even more than that, violin sonatas, quite a bit. Um, which, why did you settle on this one? Just curious. Was it one of the ones you played so before? So that was me. Okay. I, okay. I'll own up to that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this was one of uh, Mozart's last keyboard and string sonatas that mm -hmm. he wrote. And it was during the same time period opera Don Giovanni, mm -hmm. um, which is actually kind of neat to think about a composer doing opera and a sonata, like all at the same time, like mm -hmm. such a talented guy. Um, mm -hmm. But this sonata, I actually like quite a bit because there is such a conversation that goes on between the violin and the piano. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a violin solo with the piano accompaniment. And so actually the piano part, sorry, Michelle, sometimes <laughs> can be a little challenging but I think it's great for both instruments. I, I remember when I first heard my, my, as a kid, and I heard the first violin sonata, I think it was the, one of the A major ones, um, I was just immediately captivated. Uh, and I was a Mozart junkie, like when I was young. I, I loved Mozart, anything by Mozart could not go wrong. But, but as I started to uh, dive into his violin sonatas for the first time as a teenager, I realized that the earlier ones seemed like piano sonatas with some violin obligato, like we're playing these accompanying figures or long notes while the piano had all the fun. So that's why I thought it was interesting that, you know, violinists prefer some of the later ones because there's a more balance between Mozart finally realized, you know, there's actually a viable genre of chamber music here uh, that was moving. So this one was a delightful Mozart piece. Um, and I hope our audience enjoys it. So let's just dive right into uh, the Mozart. Here we go.
Bravo, bravo, bravo uh, for both of you. That's, that's such a delightful piece. So much energy. And it's interesting because we just came off listening from Bach, so we heard a lot of that uh, inter-counterpoint. And then even going into Mozart, you can hear a lot of that between the violin and the piano lines. And it's just interesting to see that evolving over time. So uh, thank you, guys. That was so enjoyable. Um, and I hope our audience enjoyed it, too. It looks like we're getting some great comments here. Thank you so much for those of you that are chiming in and enjoying our uh, program this evening. We're going to move on to the next um, piece on our program today. And um, let's talk a little bit about this. This is Ravel, yes? Now we're jumping ahead to early 20th century and in, we're in France now. How did this get on the program? Um, my, my choice. <laughs> oh, okay. This is Michelle's choice. Okay. Have you, have you, um, what was it about this piece that you enjoyed so much? Um, I always uh, liked Ravel. I like French music. Mm -hmm. And uh, today is Ravel's birthday. Today? <laughs> yes, yeah. March 7th. That's yeah. Right. So I think uh, Mar uh, Ravel is always my like, lucky composer mm -hmm. uh, because I won a UCI Concerto Capital um is uh is Ravel's piano concerto. Mm -hmm. So uh, I like uh, his uh, music. Um, has very jazzy, has a Spanish style, and also um, uh, combine the French music uh, feeling. So I feel that it's so interesting to put uh, this piece, and also this piece. Um, uh, the rubber, uh, the the violin part and the piano part both import important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I like this. I, I'm just fascinated because if you think about what was going on in the world during this time, like early 1900s, um, you know, the World's Fair in Paris, the uh, Eiffel Tower was being you know completed, and and everyone was curious about other cultures, 
And in France, they seem to embody it well. They were taking Far Eastern, Asian cultures into their writing, like Debussy. Uh, and, and Ravel was one of the few that actually said, you know, I'm going to go look at American style of music at this time and incorporate blues and jazz and into harmonies incorporated into French music writing. So just like a fine cuisine, fusion cuisine, where you get a little bit of taste of one, a little bit of the others, in this movement that you're going to hear, which is the second movement, right, Liz? It's the second movement of the second violin sonata by Ravel. Um, it's got this kind of interesting swing to it, right? I, I, have you played this before, Liz? This, piece? this was um, a new embarking for okay. me. So it was a ton of fun. It was fantastic. And it's one of the violin sonatas that uses quite a bit of pizzicato for melody and for rhythmic accompaniment. And so right. you'll see me using my finger instead of my bow where I do pizzicato. Right. Um, and that's just a lot of fun. Uh, I know that, uh, I don't know if I say this before or after, but you know how in sports people are kind of interested in with somebody who's playing and then you find out later they were playing injured. Uh, you weren't injured, <laughs> but you did. I mean, there was a part where you're doing pizzicato and you were strumming back and forth this way many times and you had to like even have a Band-Aid on your finger because of how many times you were doing it. And we're not used to plucking that way. Like that's, I mean, we're not strumming like a banjo or a guitar, um, but it's just ex exciting portion of this. So uh, let's jump right in and listen to the Ravel. This, is, uh, this was an exciting, uh, exciting piece for us. Uh, okay, let me just grab it here. Um, that's here. Here we go.
wonderful job, you guys. You guys, um, you know, that Ravel is so sultry and it's like sliding and it's like, I don't know, it just made me miss Parisian cafes and um, <laughs> croissants and, uh, and just lounging in France and listening to uh, amazing music. Uh, that was a lot of fun, and and I, I once again every time I see that that pizzicato, my I feel it in my fingers. <laughs> so what a trooper! Way way to go. Okay, we're we're fast approaching our final piece as of the program. Um, now I just want to say a little bit about this next piece because it is a duet by Shostakovich. Um, that is for two violins and piano. I have never known about this duet until Liz, you proposed it and said, hey, let's, let, what, what, can you do this? I go, well, let me listen to it. Uh, and I had to look at the music, of course, and see if there's something that, you know, because Shostakovich can get pretty hard. Thank goodness this one was more of his fun, kind of relaxed, um, from what I understand of the piece, that, um, that, you know, some of it features music from some of his other incidental music, or, and some of it was arranged by his assistant. Um, how did you come to know this piece? Liz, you knew about this piece way before I did. Um, how did you know about this piece? I did. Yeah. Shostakovich is one of my favorite composers. And mm -hmm. I've actually played it a couple times with some of my students mm -hmm. as their recital pieces. And mm -hmm. so when I get the opportunity, I welcome the mm -hmm. opportunity to do it as one of my own on a recital. And so thank you, Dean and Michelle, that we could mm -hmm. do this on this one. It was totally fun. What was it like for you, Michelle? Because there was a lot of um, there was a lot of like uh, different characteristics. I mean, we had Bach, we had Mozart. You guys had some fun with Ravel, and and now we're doing Shostakovich. What was what would you say was some of the biggest differences for you, Michelle? Um, uh, this piece, I actually my first time play is with violin and double bass. <laughs> oh, you played it. <laughs> That's very violin. interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, um, I like this piece is uh, because uh, it has a lot of different uh, uh, character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the most interesting that we play together uh, is uh, uh, we try to play in different ways mm -hmm. to uh, in different parts. Yeah, and try yeah. which one is better. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it, very interesting. In the in the limited amount of time that we had to 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 put this together, uh, we at least had a, a few opportunities to try different things and have a little fun with it, like in terms of tempos and phrasing. And each of these, there's five pieces, and each of them are around anywhere from two to four minutes long. And uh, we in this recording, you're going to see we played it straight through, um, and um, but as we worked on it, we, we knew that we could kind of play around with it. Some of it was specified by the composer, and others he kind of left up to us as performers to, uh, to try to tinker around with what we felt the phrasing brought out. So um, let's let our audience listen to it. It's, this is the Shostakovich two, uh, five pieces for two violins. Here we go.
I love how when we got to the very end of that, it was like, faster, 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 faster. <laughs> that was in the moment that we just decided that we were going to just go as fast as we can. Um, I, I love the waltz of the, uh, of the Shostakovich because it was, um, it just reminded me of either being on a carousel or somebody dancing in this like Russian ballroom. Um, so that, that was a, a whole lot of fun uh, <laughs> to play with you guys. And then that polka at the very end. Um, anyway, thank you for introducing that to me. I really, really enjoyed uh, learning that piece and playing it with you guys. Thank you for asking me to be a part of this uh, recital. Um, and it was my pleasure to play with you guys. Um, by the way, I know at the beginning of the broadcast here tonight, I said, you know, who's the furthest away that's watching? Uh, well, we have somebody who lives in Seattle um, and uh, used to be with us at F Symphony Irvine, Felix Chin. Uh, hi, Felix. Wanted to say thank you. He uh, commented on the YouTube. Um, I think Liz, you wanted to say hello as well. Um, to, to I did. Yeah. I want to say hi, Felix. Hi, Sarah. Hi, yeah. Lena. Hi, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, and uh, for all of our, our viewers, thank you so much for being a part of our event tonight. Uh, we do have one more piece for you. This is the encore uh, to the recital program. Once again, on behalf of Symphony Irvine, I want to say thank you uh, to Liz and Michelle for putting this recital together. It's our first time doing it, and I think we're getting the workflow going, and uh, I think we're going to be um, uh, doing uh, more of these uh, as time rolls on. Um, want to tell us a little bit about what they're going to hear tonight, Liz? Sure. So this is Tango por una cabeza. And this uh, was a, a lot of fun to do because I normally play it with quartet. Mm. And so this is the first time I was able to do it with violin and piano. Mm -hmm. And so por una cabeza is basically about horse racing mm -hmm. and how tight a race can be. And just one horse can win by the length of its head. Um, okay. So this was just kind of a fun tango to do. By the length of por una cabeza, right? <laughs> For one leg, uh, one head. Uh, and um, this was actually a very famous, like this is an arrangement by John Williams. Is that right? Yes. And was yeah. it used in, in, in a movie or uh, probably different movies where yeah. there's a tango scene? Um, probably, um, what is the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger? True Lies. There's a very famous tango scene in that. Um, there was a very, very famous tango scene uh, with um, Al Pacino uh, in Scent of a Woman. And it's just so much fun. So those of you listening at home, if you love tango, uh, feel free. No one's watching you. Get up, dance around, enjoy. <laughs> this is our final piece for the program, uh, the uh, tango. Let me go ahead and pull this up. Here we go.
Bravo, bravo. <laughs> what a fun piece, guys. Thank you so much for playing that. Um, uh, so that pretty much does it for our recital. Um, I want to say thank you to all our viewers. Uh, thank you so much for spending the evening with us. Liz, what do you got coming up next? Just curious. You got any... What are your next What do projects? I have coming? I don't... I have to look at my calendar. I don't okay. know off the top of my head, but I do have teaching. And mm -hmm. I see a couple of my students on here. So I want to say hello to all my students that are on there. It's so fantastic mm -hmm. to see you commenting. <laughs> yes, yes. I love seeing the people comment online. Um, oh my gosh, we have somebody who from, who's from Vancouver that's watch, watching from Vancouver um, on YouTube, Cloud J. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate you uh, watching us. Um, Michelle, that, what? that's my brother. Oh, it's your brother. That's my oh, brother. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well. And I also have many friends. Um, they mm -hmm. are watching the video uh, from Taiwan. From Taiwan. Okay, wonderful. Yes. Wow. Well, I love Taiwan. I love visiting there. And uh, you guys, I, I can't wait to make music in person uh, with you guys again. Uh, I can't wait to present music for our audience uh, for Symphony Irvine in our home in Irvine. Um, but until then, we're going to keep doing what we can to um, make music and share it with you because we believe that music is what brings us together. Uh, music is such an important part of our lives and we want to just keep doing it. Thank you guys all who watched. Um, thank you so much for uh, those of you that have donated to support tonight on Mobile Cause. Um, your um, proceeds are definitely uh, tax deductible as you are donating to our nonprofit. Um, and they will go to cover the cost of these productions and hopefully help us do more to share music in our community. So thank you so much for your um, support in all ways. So that's it for us, guys. Thank you so much for doing it. It's our first time. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the broadcast now. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. See you later. Bye. <laughs>